like you You are the miracle walking God We glorify your name There is no one like you There is no one like you Abba Father your love. We celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you indeed. You have been you all the way. Father, we have come once again to just say thank you for another time, for another day that you have made. Lord, we shall surely rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we commit this service into your hands. Father, we ask that Lord, you breathe over this service in the name of Jesus. Do that which you alone God can do in the name of Jesus. He'll deliver set free in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that your presence will be made manifest upon our life this morning in the name of Jesus. Come in your own way like never before. Let there be open heavens in the name of Jesus. Let there be open heavens in the name of Jesus. Lord, do that which you, God, can do in the name of Jesus. Breathe upon us anew afresh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O oh God, that even as we step into your presence this morning, Father, we ask, O oh God, you will meet everyone at their very point of need in the name of Jesus. We are not ignorant of the device of the enemy. Father, Lord, we plead the bloodline over this service in the name of Jesus. Any power that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, we come against you. We cancel every of your plans over this service in the name of Jesus. We ask that in Jesus you will come, you will rule, and you will reign like never before in the name of Jesus. At the end of the service, let all glory and all honor be yours forevermore. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Lord, we reference you. We glorify your name. We open up this service in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let us just get into the attitude of worship. Let's begin to worship him because he's a good God. He's a great God. He alone deserves all the praise. He is worthy. And this morning we are coming to sing and sing that we're laying it all down at your feet because you deserve it, because you're a great God.
exalt him. Brethren, we need to thank God. There are some people begging to breathe. There are some people begging with their money for oxygen. But here you are today. You are not attached to any oxygen machine. God has given you breath freely. Why don't you raise your hand and raise your voice to appreciate this God, the one who has kept you. It is by his message that we are alive. It is not because we are good. It is not because of the mask we are wearing. But for his mercy, but for his grace, give him all the honor. He is the miracle working God. He is the almighty God. He is the unchangeable changer. He is the Lord of us. He is the man of war. He is the mighty man in battle. Let's thank God for a new season in America. Give him all the praise that you are alive to witness this new season. Give him all the glory for what God is about to do in our lives as a nation as individuals let's worship him let's return all the glory back to him it can only be god it can only be god it can only be god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus we return all the glory back to you to god be the glory great things he has done so long the more that he gave us his son who yield his life and atonement for sin and opened the lives that all they go praise the Lord will be taken from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, Matthew 3, 1 to 17, I read. 
in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to meet him, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brother of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not think to, to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hands, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat onto the barn. But he will burn up the sharp with unquenchable task, with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. The second Bible reading is from Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Verse 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. May the Lord bless his words into our understanding in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's sit back and listen to the following announcement. Today is day 14 of the first 21 days of fasting and prayer declared for all our CCG worldwide by the General Overseer, Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye. This first phase out of the 63 days of fasting and prayer will end on January 31st, 2021. Please note that 12 days of dry fasting will suffice for the first 21 days of fasting. We do advise you to consult your doctor before you embark on any type of fasting exercise. All members of the church are enjoined to be part of the spiritual exercise. And the Lord will bless you as you partake in this fast in Jesus' name. The Lord will strengthen and uphold you in Jesus' name. The teleconference prayer session will hold every day during the fasting and prayer Please call 701-791-9920 to join the prayer line. 
Teleconference prayer line starts at 5 p.m. every day and runs from 5 p.m. to 5.30. The Lord bless you as you join in Jesus' name. 2021 Regional Pastors Virtual Visit to our Province, Province 2, comes up this Saturday, January 30th, 2021, at 11 a.m. The theme of the visit is Seven in the Storm. You can watch the visit on Dominion YouTube channel. Search with RCCG Dominion Cathedral NG. Let's all endeavor to be a part of that glorious service. The New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy has announced two additional categories of New Jersey residents eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccination. Beginning Thursday, January 14, all New Jersey residents ages 65 and older and individuals ages 16 to 64 with certain medical conditions are defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, that increase the risk of severe illness from the virus are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccination. Please see details of the press release on the notice board or visit covid19.nj.gov slash vaccine for more information. The Elders Fellowship Zoom meeting for the month of January comes up next Sunday, January 31st at 2 p.m. Please look out for the Zoom link on the Elders Fellowship. As you've listened to the announcement, my prayer is that the Lord will announce you in Jesus' name. Please sit back and welcome our senior pastor to continue with special announcement. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Dominion, online, on-site. I welcome you to this service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I also want to welcome all our online viewers globally. Wherever you are watching from, I pray that the same anointing and the same blessings that we receive here will be your portion in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Brethren, I want to remind us again that every time we appear before God, there is a blessing in waiting for us. Today, I pray that somebody here in this year of elevation will experience strange progress. You will experience amazing and sudden breakthroughs. For somebody here, the Lord is saying that there will be rapid progress concerning your healing. In the name of Jesus, this week will be struggle free for you. This week will be stress-free for you. This week will be sickness-free for you. Lift up your right hand and say, I am moving forward. Say it one more time. Say, I am moving forward. Say, Lord, lift me up and move me forward. Amen. That's your testimony what you have just said will be your testimony. You will experience it this week. In the name of Jesus. Please stay focused. And the almighty God will keep you from failing and from falling. In the name of Jesus. Baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. Baby girl to the family of Dr. and Mrs. Benga. And Tokwe Adekeye. Baby arrived on Friday. Please call 908-764-6450 and 973-342-2810 to celebrate with the family. Somebody here that is expectant, you are next online to be celebrated too. In the name of Jesus. Uh, by the special grace of God, we had the announcements concerning the vaccination. I want to encourage us to please, 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 if you are in the eligible window, 
register for the vaccination. You can register at www.sxcovid.org because we are in Essex County. www.sxcovid.org or you can call 973-877-8456 We'll put it on the notice board and the Almighty God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, by the special grace of God, we started our Dominion Food Pantry. Uh, we were able to distribute food last Sunday. And I want to encourage us that we will be doing this at least two Sundays in a month. We are entitled to do it for six hours every month, and the Lord will help us. I also want to thank everyone who has been part of it, and the Almighty God will bless us in Jesus' name. Uh, if you look behind, you can see the pictures. We already have our storage filled already. Uh, next Sunday, we are going to be distributing. And I want us to know that by the reason of this uh, new door that God has opened for us, we will need more freezers and we will need a fridge. Oh, if you have any of these things that you have locked up in the storage and you are not using it, you can consider donating it to Dominion Food Pantry. We need your assistance to help us and we need those who will commit helping to apportion the foods and to bag them up and i want to remind you that there is no hours that you have invested in the kingdom business that goes to waste we want to thank everyone that has been helping us because some people go they pick up the food they come they unload it the almighty god will bless them in jesus name and some come we pick the food and we go away and god will also bless us in jesus name but if you can help <laughs> we solicit for your help and the lord bless you in jesus name hallelujah glory be to god uh, I did inform us last week that next Sunday, by the special grace of God and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, I will be praying specifically and specially for families who are giving their first fruit and for all who are having challenges in their marriages and with their children there's going to be a special prayer next sunday and i pray that the almighty god will give you peace this year i said the almighty god will give you peace this year nothing will truncate your peace no more shall the enemy turn your source of joy into source of sorrow and regrets in the name of jesus God will give you peace in your home, in your marriage, and your children shall be a blessing in the name of Jesus. So put it in your mind, and the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. I want you to sit back and enjoy the rest of this service. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. At this point, we want to welcome as many that are worshiping with us for the very first time in this uh, sanctuary. So if you're here this morning and today, this morning, the, the first time of worshiping with us in this sanctuary, can you please uh, signify by raising up of hand? Anyone? Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is good. 
We need to do more work. We need to invite more people to the sanctuary. The Lord bless every one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. It's offering time. So shall we package our offering and our tithe? We are going to be taking the two together, our offering and our tithe. Let's get our envelope. Let's uh, package our offering and our tithe. And then the ushers will go around uh, to collect them. Shall we rise up, everyone? Please, let's rise up and let's dance. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Let's be cheerful. Let's give cheerfully. Praise the Lord. Put us victory. That's why we sing. Oh, say it. Yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? to give his or her offering, you are the only one to shout hallelujah. God bless the ushers. Um, we, want all, we want to also encourage as many that are watching us online that you have opportunity to also give your tithe and offering uh, by logging on to the uh, RCCG Dominion uh, NJ.org website. You'll see the uh, given menu at the top right hand corner. Click on it and then you'll be able to give your offering. Praise the Lord. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for this privilege to give. As we have given unto you this morning, we pray, O oh Lord, that we, we will never run dry. In every area of our lives, O oh Lord, we will not run dry. We pray, O oh Lord, Father, that our hands shall forever be up. In the name of Jesus, everything we lay our hands upon shall prosper. Are there anyone here that's going through any financial difficulty at this time? We pray that the Lord will raise you up. That the Lord will revive your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. And as many that don't even have to give at this time, Father, we pray that lack shall be removed from such lives. Lack shall be removed from such lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
at this period of uh, crisis, global crisis, we pray, O oh Lord, Father, that this time, O oh Lord, even when people are saying can't stay down, Father, in our own situation, our lives shall be hope. People will be wondering, how are we doing it? People will see you in our lives. Your glory will radiate through us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. At this time, I want to welcome one of our daughters in the house. She's going to be doing a special ministration. Um, let's put our hands together as I welcome Nifemi Akinwole. She's going to be ministering in a song titled, You Are Bigger. Let's keep clapping until she comes up. Yes, you are. 
greater heights in the name of Jesus you shall be for signs and wonders hallelujah amen we're going to be taking our congregational hymn we're going to be singing while standing I'm pressing on the upward way I'm pressing up the upward way we're going to be singing while standing
dwell in the attitude of worship. Amen. Amen. Still in the attitude of worship, I just want us to go ahead and just worship the Lord and just bless Him. If we know indeed He's bigger, He's bigger, He's bigger than the world, He's bigger than everything, He's bigger than COVID, let's just go ahead and worship Him. Let's bless Him, let's give Him all the glory. He's bigger, He's bigger. Lebo shata kata yada bala basanda yaba. Ekete kete kete le debosh. Mari bo 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 masende lebo. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. Before we sit down, this month has been declared as a month of elevation and new heights. But we've been waiting on the Lord, and the Lord said we should thank Him and appreciate Him. I just want us to go before Him because He's bigger. When I was coming, this morning, I was dressing up. I was, you know, rushing for the um, workers' prayer meeting. And the Lord told me that we should thank him. Just the way I was rushing, he said, thank God we are not being rushed to the ICU. I just want us to go ahead and just worship him and bless him. Lebo Sata. So when she came, I said, he is bigger. He's bigger. Let's just go ahead. He's bigger than COVID. He's bigger than COVID. He's bigger than COVID. He's bigger than anything oh lord father we thank you we bless your holy name thank you because we're not being rushed even where if those people even online just thank him that you can be comfortable wherever you are father we thank you we bless you we magnify your holy name thank you because you're bigger thank you because you're bigger oh lord father we thank you we thank you we are not being rushed to the high ICU. we're not being rushed to the mortuary father we thank you lord Lebo Satakatayadaba. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. One more, one more, one more. She came and that confirmed what God said too. She said, Bigger. You know, as at the time the president, the former president was still there. America is the superpower, you know. That's the you know, that's the main power in the whole world. But I want us to go ahead and just thank him that Father, thank you. Because you're bigger, whole Lord. Even than the superpower, the superpower. Let's just go ahead and because if you had if 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 you had not been the Lord, Father, we thank you. Let's just worship the name of the Lord. Let's bless his holy name. That Father Lord, we're here. The protest did not turn to war. Father, we thank you, O Lord. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Lastly. Praise the Lord. Lastly, we're going to thank God. This year has been declared as, as our year of elevation and the month of new heights. I want us to go ahead before God and say, Daddy, thank you because we know that it is settled. We know that it is settled. We know that it is settled. We know that you are bigger, whole Lord. We know that you are higher, whole Lord. You are higher than the highest. You are better than the best. You are mightier than the mightiest, whole Lord. Father, we give you all the glory. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name mighty name we have worship in jesus mighty name we have worship worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb
heaven and the land we will worship you. The everlasting one we bow before you, Lord. Father, we thank you for all that you have done in this church. We thank you for what you are doing, O oh Lord. We thank you for what you're about to do. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration, O oh Lord. Father, we pray at this time, O oh Lord, that Father, Lord, you will move like never before, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, I decrease while you increase in me, in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, I pray that you will speak through me and you will speak to your people. You would deliver people, O oh Lord. You would deliver lives. Even listening to me now and in the future, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you for all that you have done in the land of America, in the world as a whole. Father, in your church, we give you all the glory. Blessed be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. We can be seated, please. Good morning, everybody. Pastor, I, just, I want to thank you once again for giving me this opportunity to be here again. And I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it. Thank you. I love you. And to my co-ministers in the vineyard, I love you too. And to all the congregation, because without you, I won't be here. So I salute you. Thank you so much for being here. And to our people online, I love you too, even, I don't, even if I don't see you. God will be with you in Jesus' name. Um, today's, God is coming to us today and asking, he's asking us a question this morning. So the title of our message this morning is, How I do you want to fly this year? How I do you want to fly? And when God is talking, that means God has given us an open check. So it's, it's up to us. To, to, you know, he has signed it, and it's a done deal. It's up to us to fill in the gap. How high do you want to fly? It is not a coincidence that this year was declared our year of elevation and our month of new height. We can see that both tends to be lifted and to get, get into higher grounds. I want us to open our Bible to Matthew 3, Matthew 3, 13 to 17, Matthew 3, 13 to 17, Matthew 3, 13 to 17, I read, then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, have need to be baptized of thee, and commence thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Quickly, we're going to be looking, because this is what we're going to be using this morning. We're going to be looking at Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Matthew 4, 1 to 11 is the continuation of um, the 3, 13 to 17. I read Matthew 4. 1 to 11. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up unto the holy city, and set him on the pinnacle of the, of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, 
and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto, unto him, Get thee and Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil liveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. May the Lord bless the reading of the word and the hearing in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to quickly go into this. There are steps that need to be taken for us to get to where we want to go to. God has given us an open chain. God has made up his mind to take us higher. But are we willing, first of all, to go higher? Are we willing to go as far as possible? That is the question. If the answer is yes, then I want us to look at this. There are some things that we need. There are some steps that need to be taken. And this is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, coming down to show us those steps that we need to take. He, he took those steps. And glory be to God that God was with him and he was able to do it. First step we need to take is humility and to, to surrender. Humility and surrender. Absolute. Total. And what is humility? It is a modest or low view of oneself or importance, freedom from arrogance, and to yield to power or a higher force, which is God. That is, you let go of your thoughts. You let go of your abilities. You let go of your intellect. You let go of your wisdom. This stage is not a stage where you rationalize. It's not a stage where you lean onto your own understanding. Humility, as simple as we say it or call it, if we look deep into it, it is always not easy to do. It is not a level that any, any, anybody can be. It takes the grace of God. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit. Humility. And we can see, even in the Bible, we can even see here, when Jesus Christ came, John the Baptist was the forerunner. He was sent ahead of Jesus Christ. He knew exactly what he was meant to do. He knew that Jesus Christ was mightier. He was, you know, he is the strongest. You know, he, he is the Messiah. When Jesus Christ came, out of humility, Jesus Christ came to be baptized by him, and just. Um, he's all, he's all, I mean, sorry, um, John the Baptist was like, oh, you are the one that's supposed to, that normally that's supposed to baptize me. I would rather let you because you are higher than me, you are better than me. But Jesus Christ did one thing. He humbled himself. And Jesus Christ asked, I told um, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist, out of humility too, because they both understood what humility is, said, I permit thee, I will do this. Now, Jesus Christ was telling John the Baptist there that, listen, I know what humility means. I was born in the manger. I, I, I wasn't born in Alpine or, you know, short hills. I, I was born in the manger. I, I know what humility means. He said in, in, in Genesis 71, when Abraham was told that, walk before me and be thou perfect. I was the one. I was there. So I understand when it comes to being humble. So no wonder, you know, Jesus Christ was able to do that. And John the Baptist, too, was able to do what he was meant to do. There are places in the Bible that, that tells us about humility. We, we can open our Bible to Proverbs twenty-two twenty-nine. 
Proverbs 22, 29. He said, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up, and the humble shall be saved, and the humble shall be saved, and the humble shall be saved. So at that point, when you are humble, there are some things you attract by default in the kingdom. Power, honor, glory. When you surrender, that means you're saying, it is not all about me. It is all about who has sent me. So in as much as we want to get to the next level, new heights, we want to fly as high as possible, we need to be humble. Jesus Christ demonstrated this. Even going to the cross, he did it for you and I. And I pray that as we do this, God will help us and he will lift us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says so many things about humility. It says, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. This is not something that I really need to tell us. We, we saw what happened just now, even in this country. God receives the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Whatever you do, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, wherever you're serving, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Surrender. Yield to the higher power. To the higher force, which is God. He knows your beginning. He knows your ending. And he's at the center of it. So don't rationalize. Don't lean onto your own understanding. Just surrender unto him. It is not by coincidence. It is not by chance that we were lifted from the valley of COVID-19. Because we were in the valley last year. But he lifted us up. Because we humbled ourselves. We enjoyed that grace. And I pray that that grace will not run dry this year in the name of Jesus. The second step we want to look at is purification and holiness. Purification and holiness. Jesus never sinned. But he came here all because of us all because of you and I. We can see that when he went to be baptized by John the Baptist. He didn't really need to do it, but he wanted to show us the way. And he wanted to show us what humility means. So, there's no, if, if you're not, if you don't have that spirit of humility, if you haven't surrendered, there won't be purification and holiness. You will just be gambling. So, Jesus Christ went through that. And he was trying to tell us that, listen, for you to have access to me, to see me, to deal with me, because without holiness, we cannot see God. You need to be purified. You need to you know, live a life of holiness. And he showed us that. And something strange happened, which never happened and has never even happened up till now. What happened? They said the heavens were opened. The heavens were opened. So that means if we are humble and we live a life of holiness, we look inwards, we search ourselves, we are not lying to ourselves, the heavens will be opened unto us this year in the name of Jesus. And we will go high, high, even have, having access into the heavenlies in the name of Jesus. What is purification? A way of changing the inner self and putting on a new nature. Just like they were baptized, they sinned. Then they came out a new life. Genuine repentance. Genuine repentance. Living 
a life that pleases the Most High. Second Corinthians seven one, Second Corinthians seven one, Second Corinthians seven one. What does it say? Second Corinthians seven one. Can it be projected, please, so that we can all see? If if not, then having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It sounds difficult to do with the flesh, but with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, with God. All things are possible. Purification, holiness. Once you obey, living a love of obedience, holiness is possible. God said this, don't do this. This I said, this don't do. God will help us in the name of Jesus. So a life of obedience leads to holiness. Listening to the master, not going beyond what the master said, not doing less of what he said. And I pray as we are willing to do this this year, the Lord will help us and the Holy Spirit will inspire us on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. The next step is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Matthew 4, after the heavens were opened unto him, and the Spirit of the Lord came down like a dove, descending on Jesus Christ. Matthew 4, 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil of the devil. As much as we want to fly high this year, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to navigate for us. We need the Holy Spirit to be the pilot. We need the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. The Holy Spirit led Jesus Christ into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So that means the devil is hanging somewhere waiting for us. But without the help of the Holy Spirit, no wonder Jesus Christ said, told his disciples, that when I get to heaven, I will tell my father to send the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He knew, he knew, he knew that there's no way we can do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. And one thing that I have realized this, a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians, they don't carry the Holy Spirit along. They don't have this relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is within us, but most times when we probably have a nightmare, probably have, you know, some challenges, rather than, first of all, telling the Holy Spirit, Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, or speaking in tongues, we run elter skelter. We don't even carry the Holy Spirit along. And if we don't move closer to him, we're limiting and he won't move closer to us. So we're caging the Holy Spirit. For God to have sent the Holy Spirit, descending like a dove on Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And that Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. And we don't allow the Holy Spirit God has delivered us this morning in Jesus' name. And he has delivered me too. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It is allowing the Holy Spirit to take over while we decrease totally. While we yield to him. 
This is the power and grace that we need to attain or fly as high as possible. The Holy Spirit searches. It reveals. It knoweth all things. It knows the deep secrets. The Holy Spirit is the, is the omnipresent, omniscience, omnipotent. There's no way we can do this without the help of the Holy Spirit. Even when Jesus Christ was here, it wasn't everywhere at the same time. But he knew that with the disciples, with us, with us, we are the disciples today, that we need the help of the Holy Spirit everywhere at the same time. For example, we are gathered now. We have the Holy Spirit with us. In Africa, they are gathered. The Holy Spirit is there. In the UK, the Holy Spirit is with them. So God, Jesus Christ knew this, that we needed the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit acts as a guide. And he helps us greatly. Micah 3.8. What does Micah 3.8 say? It says, But truly, I'm full of the, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Without the Holy Spirit, there will not be power. Without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing before the devil. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot face the challenges of the world. No wonder he said that when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall receive power. Power. And we need power to fly as high. Even a plane does. Power. Proverbs 26, 13 says, By his spirit, he had garnished the heavens. By his spirit, he had garnished the heavens. If, please, um, I want, if the, if engineering can project Genesis 1, 1 to 3, please, because I want us to, I want us to look at this together. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. You know, he has said it in, 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 in Job that, he garnished the heavens by the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Verse 2, please. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. No, can we go back to 2, please? It's very important, please. I want us to catch this, please. And the earth was without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Please hold on. Just like we're traveling this year now, we want to go high. We want to go. There are some places that are. It's, it's just darkness. We can't comprehend. We don't understand. But the Holy Spirit sees light. But we see darkness. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mind you, Jesus, God hasn't said, let there be light. So the Holy Spirit searches. He knows. He, he has been. The Holy Spirit is not it. Holy Spirit is a person. Please. God the Father, the Son, the There was nothing that was created that he didn't know about. He has been. Ancient of days. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. But before that, God knew. Because this, that is the spirit of God. When he was taken care of, God said, let there be light. And there was light. I pray that God will open our eyes of understanding this year. And he will inspire us. Every minute, every second, because we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. And no wonder the Holy Spirit led Jesus Christ into the wilderness. 
Because they are one anyway. Verse 2 says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and on guard. Thank God to our general overseer that declared this fasting. Because we actually need this. And, you know, basically there are two types of fasting. You have the corporate fasting and you have the individual fasting. Most times the corporate fasting is a command. And that means God is willing and ready to do something. We can see that in Esther 4, 6, when they had problems and Esther had to fast because he wanted to, she wanted to see the king. And normally, at that, for that period of time, you, you were not supposed to see the king. But he told his mates, I mean her mates rather, and the whole Jew, Jewish people around, you know, where they were, and he said, let's declare, let's, you know, they declared a fast. And they all fasted. And he said, with this fasting, though going to the king is a two-way thing. It's either I perish or, and the other happened. Praise the Lord. So please, if you haven't started fasting, please, even if you can't start, join. I mean, if you, if you can't do, you know, the ones you've missed, please join. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. Praying and fasting. Jesus Christ did 40 days, 40 nights. 40 days, 40 nights. So what is fasting? It brings us close. It brings us cl close. I mean, it brings us to a close intimacy with God by denying our carnal mind. It shows our hunger for him. And he pours out himself into us. Into us. Power. He makes us to be more sensitive. Then, five, test and temptation. We will be tested. It's a given. The devil test, you know, tempted Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ didn't just overcome him, but he overcame him by the word. 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 What do we confess? What do we know? What do we meditate on? When the devil comes at us, what do we do? Do we chase him with, with the word? The Bible says those who know they are strong, I mean they are God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Do you tell him when he comes at you with, you know, sicknesses and all that, do you tell him that by, your, by, by his stripes we were healed? What do you tell him? The Bible says in James 4, 7, it says, resist the devil and he will flee. When he comes, what do you say? Do you say the word? Do you act the word? Do you meditate and stand on the word? And as we do so this year, the Lord in the name of Jesus. Having said all this, the ultimate goal, because it is a, self, it is a done deal that the Lord will elevate us this year and he has elevated us, the ultimate goal is to balance the purpose of God and the elevation. We are being lifted because not of us, because of others. We are being lifted. We can see in, in Exodus 8 1, when the, 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 the children of Israel in Egypt, when Moses sent, sent uh, Moses, I mean, God sent Moses to Pharaoh, he told them, Let my people go so that they can serve me. Jesus Christ came. They said they, 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 they worshipped him. When after, you know, the, the devil flee, they said the angels came and worshipped him. The Amplified Version says they brought food to him. Those things that we need to do. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And every other thing. The food, the city, everything that the devil was tempting him with. Eventually, the angels brought them to him. So brethren, 
We are being lifted today not because we know how to do it. Not because it's for us. It is for the kingdom of God. So ultimately, attaining new heights is not impossible for God to do. But balancing the elevation and what he has called us to do, the purpose, evangelism, we can see. I, I won't be able to read, I'll paraphrase. If we, if, if we get home, please, let's just go ahead and look at it. From Matthew 4, 12 to 25, it tells us how Jesus Christ started his ministry. It was after this that Jesus Christ even started his ministry. He picked his disciples. He started healing people. He started doing the work of his master. Verse 24 says, and his fame went through out all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. This is the reason why God wants to elevate us this year. Are we willing to win souls this year? Are we willing to evangelize? Are we willing to help others? Because the place of elevation is a place of help. The place of elevation is a place of prosperity. The place of elevation is a place of power and authority. So God is going to elevate us. But when we get there, are we going to be condemning? Or are we going to be doing the will of God? And I pray, I pray that God will help us this year. And we will fly higher than expected in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the Lord. How high do you want to fly? I want you to bow down your heads and tell God how high. How high you will fly is determined by how Humbly, you can yield to God. It's going to be determined by how sensitive you are to God and to satanic deceptions. The passage we read says, that after Jesus fasted, the devil came to tempt him. Guess what the devil did? The Bible says, the devil took him into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and started to deceive Jesus, the Lord. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time, thou dash thy foot against a stone. That is the devil there that is quoting wrong scripture. And I want you to know, that your flight this year will be determined by how sensitive you are and how vigilant you are at deception, deceptionists, those who will deceive, deceivers. The devil is here deceiving the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's 
same scripture. How many people are quoting scripture to you and the wrong scripture? The scripture they are quoting does not match with their behavior and with their character. That's how you will know. This is fake. devil fake here. I want you to ask the Lord. Help me to fulfill purpose. The devil was unable to deceive and prevent our Lord Jesus from fulfilling his purpose. And that's why I know that this year, no matter how the devil try, he cannot overcome you. The devil will not be able to pull you down this year in the name of Jesus. But you must be sensitive. You must be sensitive about where you go. About who you are, who is, who is speaking to you. Who is talking to you. The devil is speaking here. Talking to the Lord himself. Deceiving Jesus. Quoting wrong scripture. Look at what he said. Hmm. They shall bear thee up in their hands. And after this, the devil didn't stop here. So I want you to look. What are those things giving you false pressure? Do you know there are some human beings, when they want to deceive you, they can give you money. They will bring gifts to your house. They will talk to you. They will do things that will make you just to lose your stand, to compromise your stand. The test is coming. Here, Jesus was being tested. The reason why he flew high, why he was able to fulfill purpose is because he focused on Christ. He focused on God, the one that sent him on an errand. I want you to look up. Just look up and say, Lord, this year, I look up unto you alone. Lord, help me. Keep my gaze on you so that the devil will not pull me down. The only reason why the devil could not pull Jesus down was because he was looking unto God. He was depending on his father. I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, I want to depend on you this year. He is the only one that can keep you from failing and from falling. Just hold his hand. Yes. Anchor to him. Say, Lord Jesus, I anchor to you. I put my faith and my trust in you alone. Keep me from failing. Keep me from falling. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. This is a very crucial moment. It's a moment of destiny. And there are some you, you know, you know that the enemy has already grabbed you. I want you to look up to God and say, Father, deliver me from the deception of the enemy. Cry to God. Say, Lord, I need you. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me from the deception of the enemy. I will not look back, Lord. The devil even told Jesus, all this I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. The devil has no good gift. I want, to, I want to announce to you. Every gift that the devil is going to give to you is a contaminated gift. It's a compromised gift. You don't need anything from the devil. I want you to say, Lord, I reject the devil's offer. I reject the devil's offer. I reject the devil's offer in every ramification in the name of Jesus. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on a vulnerable a higher plane that I, Lord, plant my feet on Lord, lift me up and let me stand by 
Faith on heaven, most terrible Authority in heaven, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, adoration because you are the lifter up of our heads. You are the one who has the power and no one can pull down. Just as the heaven is above the earth, and no force or power, no matter how strong, can pull the heaven down. I declare and decree over all your children that are here listening online, that Lord, you will lift them up in the name of Jesus. May God lift you up above principalities and power in the name of Jesus. May you be lifted above all the deception of the enemy in the name of Jesus. May you be lifted above sickness, above diseases, above infections, above viruses, above sorrows in the name of Jesus. May the Lord keep you from failing, from falling. The Bible says he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. I declare and decree that every crafty and cunning person in your lives, in your families, waiting and hiding to deceive you, their agendas will fail and crumble in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. Brethren, many of us do not know what God did last Wednesday in the United States of America. The United States of, of America was on edge. There was tension all over. Tension all over. There was siege and there was insurrections. And there were plans to destabilize the root of democracy and the seat of government. Some of those plans are being exposed right now. But you know what God did? God disappointed the devices of the crafty. All those that were standing by and that were standing back were crushed. The plan of the enemy was that there will never be a transition of government. That was the enemy's plan. But God took charge, overturned the plans of the enemy. And as I watch the program, the inauguration of the new president. The first thing I saw was that this new president, our new president, President just Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they went into church first thing in the morning. They went into church. They went to God. You are going to pray. We're going to pray as a church and you will pray that God will give you the knowledge and the understanding to take everything to God first when you look at the money of the United States of America there is something that they write on it I don't know whether many of you know it I know you spend it in God we trust that God has never failed this country 
And that same God will not fail you. So I want us to lift up our president to God. I want us to pray that the almighty God that he has gone to seek on his first day will empower him with strength and with wisdom to rule this nation. Pray, 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 pray. Lord, we want to thank you for what you did in the United States of America concerning the transition to a new government. Thank you for the peaceful transition. Thank you because you disappointed the devices of the crafty. You disabled the agenda of evil. You, 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 you terminated every evil plan to throw this country into jeopardy and war in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for peace. That you brought in with the transition. We ask that you will empower our new president with strength, good health, knowledge, understanding, even to rule this nation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now I want you to pray one more prayer. What happened last Wednesday is significant. And we want to use it as a point of contact to all other nations. Using the nation of Nigeria. Right now, they are kidnapping and they are killing innocent souls. They are killing, they are kidnapping. So we want to lift up our country, Nigeria. And we are going to pray that God will kidnap every kidnapper. We are going to pray that everyone who is unjustly terminating the lives of people, heaven will terminate their agenda, heaven will terminate them in the name of Jesus. Every evil plan concerning the nation of Nigeria, we want to come against it in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that there will be peace. Begin to pray that there will be peace. Begin to pray that there will be social justice. There will be social equality. Oh, begin to pray and begin to come against the spirit of poverty. Begin to come against the spirit of terrorism. Begin to come against every agenda that is not of God. That is operating in the nation. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to declare unto you to create peace. Peace within our borders. Peace within our nations. Peace in the nation of Nigeria. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We glorify your name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, we are here to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your son that has brought the word. I pray that he will fly higher. I pray, Lord, that you will lift him up. Lord, I want to thank you for a peaceful change of government in the United States. Lord, the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Thank you for answered prayers. And I know that you that did it for America, you did it for all other nations. Where there is trouble, I command peace. Where there is trouble, I command peace. Where there is kidnapping, I command immediate stop in the name of Jesus. Kidnap the kidnappers. Kidnap the kidnappers. Kidnap the kidnappers. In the name of Jesus. This week, I pray that the word that you have had, it will be a blessing to your life. Receive the grace to appropriate it to every area of your life. You will fly higher. This year is your year of elevation. 
heaven has programmed it so no devil will be able to disable it go ahead fly high go ahead soar high above principalities above powers above sicknesses shall be well with you in jesus mighty name i have prayed amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Most High God. Brethren, we give God all the praise for all that he has done to us far. But we want to use this opportunity to again uh, welcome those who are fellowshipping for the first time with us. You are here on site. This is your first time in this glorious assembly just lift your hands and wave unto jehovah this is your first time here can we see your hands up hallelujah give god praise and we thank god for all those who are online who are uh, 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 joining this beautiful service for the first time the lord will honor you all in jesus name thank you king of glory blessed be the name of the most high god can we all be upstanding as we bring the service to a close just lift up your hands and wave unto jehovah just say father i thank you for the privilege for, for for making it possible for me to be part of this awesome service i thank you because you have programmed that i will fly high i thank you that i'm flying high i will fly higher and higher day by day i'm moving forward nothing will stop me in the mighty name of jesus blessed be your holy name of god in jesus precious name we have prayed and it shall be so in jesus name we will take the motto it will be projected one two go this is my year of elevation god will restore and add value to me daily god's power and presence will overshadow me this year God will attend specially to all my needs this year. This year, I will have peace and rest on every side. Help and help us of my destiny from the four corners of the world shall locate me. This year will be tension free, sickness free, crisis free, debt free, COVID-19 free, bondage free, struggle free, failure free, affliction free pain and discomfort free for me god will shield me from all strange diseases i decree that this year will be pleasant for me and my family this year i will recover all past losses and experience uncommon promotion in every area of my life i will not derail diminish or dwindle i will grow from strength to strength and from victory to victory I decree that this year, everyone fighting against me will fall down for me to rise. Every unrepentant enemy against my life will suffer permanent damage, calamity, and irreversible defeat. No matter how much the enemy tries, they will not overcome me this year. My divine inheritance of peace and joy shall not be compromised. I reject physical spiritual and financial embarrassment this year according to job 8 22 those that hate me shall be cloaked with shame the power of god will silence every opposition against my life the everlasting hands will surely carry me through this year i will not die prematurely i will experience all-round restoration and wellness it is well with me amen it is well with each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we share the grace now? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.